Welcome back to Latinos in Action con Yesenia Taveras. This episode highlights the 2010 Miss Hispanic of Delaware pageant. The pageant has been in existence since 1972 and became a part of a week-long celebration in 1977 called Semana Hispana. As the Hispanic community grew in Wilmington, so did the activities during the week-long celebration. Now, the Miss Hispanic of Delaware pageant is held annually in August and gives young Latinas between the ages of 16 and 19 a chance to build self-esteem and confidence. I participated in the pageant because I want to try something new. I had never pictured myself doing something like this and I thought it would be a good experience. If you, you participate, it's one of the best experiences you will have because it shows you how strong you are inside because you're in front of a, a bunch of people and you've never seen them in your life and you're performing. And every event you attend, it's a different performance to a whole different a crowd, a different crowd every time. So it makes you a stronger person, even though you don't feel it is, but it's making you a stronger person inside and out. It is how you're acting and how you look towards life. I've actually learned a lot about myself. I've actually learned that I have a lot of self-confidence and I've actually just, it's just been a lot of like soul searching for me personally. It all goes back in like confidence. You have to be very confident about yourself. Don't ever let nobody put you down. And that's basically one of the reasons why I joined the pageant because I wasn't really sure of myself. And after I won the pageant, well, I was just like more like more confident. And that's something that I keep teaching the girls this year to be confident and always be sure about yourself and just represent Latinos, which is a good thing and it's an honor. Organized by Nuestra Raices Delaware, the Miss Hispanic of Delaware pageant, along with the Hispanic Festival and Parade, became the most popular events in Wilmington, Delaware to be held during Hispanic Heritage Month. Hispanic Heritage Month, celebrated from September 15th to October 15th, serves to recognize the contributions of Hispanic Americans in the United States since 1968 and to bring attention to the celebration of life, work, culture, heritage, and the traditions of Hispanics in the state of Delaware and across the nation. You can see a lot of these young girls come from family, they come from the islands and different parts of the Latino community. And most of them, they don't know their uh, roots. So this uh, pageant try to uh, uh, put on them a piece of each of their country. And that's what we try to then learn from the country so we don't lose our traditions. We want everybody, not have to be Latino, like African Americans, Americans, any, any person who live in this state, we want to come even from Philadelphia, New York, so they can learn from us. They can learn from the Latino community, the, the beautiful people we are, you know what I mean? We like different colors, different uh, languages, but you know, everything get together because we love our country. And that's why we make this a festival and this pageant and the parade so special. El Festival Hispano is un evento de tres días. Esta celebración de la cultura hispana es la más grande en Wilmington, Delaware. Los políticos y negocios escogen esta oportunidad para llegar a un acuerdo con la comunidad hispana. Quizás la parte más sabrosa del festival son los alimentos locales producidos para venta. Los restaurantes locales salen a servir los alimentos preferidos auténticos de México, de Puerto Rico y de República Dominicana. Las organizaciones de estudiantes de universidades locales también participan en el Festival Hispano para promover su gerencia y para demostrar a la comunidad que la población de latino está creciendo en universidades y universidades locales. Es importante tener una organiza organización uh, latina porque es, 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 buen, es bueno para los, los estudiantes eh, enseñar, la, eh, aprender la cultura de los latinos y eh, aprender todo, la música, la gente, cómo, lo, cómo hablamos, todo. Bueno, es mi tercer año este, siendo la presidenta en Delaware State University. Este, a mí me encanta estar en la, en la organización porque puedo hacer eventos que, todo el, que, que, que todos los latinos, son, como enseñar cómo somos unidos, 
y enseñar a la escuela que pueden aprender de los latinos y vengan a bailar, lo que sea lo que estemos haciendo. Y pues vengo pues para enseñarle la música, para que aprendan el estilo de salsa, de merengue, vengan a probar las comidas que hay de diferentes culturas y así salen de, de lo normal. En todos los Estados Unidos, de 15 de septiembre hasta 15 de octubre, los americanos reconocen, honran y aprenden acerca de las contribuciones que los hispanos han hecho a este país. En agosto de 2009, el nombramiento de Sonia Sotomayor como asociado de la justicia de la Corte Suprema de los Estados Unidos fue un gran orgullo para la comunidad latina. Ella es la primera hispana que ha logrado ser nombrada para Corte Suprema de las Justicias de los Estados Unidos y la tercera mujer que ha obtenido esa posición. Esto es un ejemplo de las contribuciones que los latinos han hecho en los Estados Unidos. El mes de la gerencia hispana es también un tiempo para celebrar y reflexionar de todos los soldados latinos que abran el camino para que las futuras generaciones tengan una mejor forma de vida. Mientras los números de muertos de Wilmington sobrepasan el nivel más alto, el mantenimiento de la paz en Wilmington, el ex consejero de la ciudad de Wilmington, Dimitri Ortega Jr., la Iglesia Católica de San Pablo y los miembros de los consejeros de Wilmington, Kevin Kelly y Samuel Prado, llevó a cabo la marcha contra la droga más grande para demostrar esfuerzo y conocimiento a los residentes, organizaciones y iglesias para hablar de la violencia de la ciudad de Wilmington. La marcha contra la droga la estábamos haciendo desde el 1980 y por los últimos dos años paramos de hacer la marcha por la violencia en la calle. Es una necesidad que nosotros como una comunidad nos unamos y hagamos lo mejor para ayudar. Yo sé que la marcha contra la droga no va a resolver el problema, pero es tiempo para unir la comunidad y dejar saber a la comunidad que podemos hacer la diferencia ayudándonos unos a los otros. Ortega cree que la solución a la violencia debe de venir de la comunidad y los líderes espirituales de la ciudad. How do you go about informing uh, the Hispanic community on those resources? Because as we all know, mm -hmm. the economy is very bad right now. Exactly. There are a lot of us, Hispanics, Latinos, right. who are living without health insurance, who have taken minimum wage jobs and mm -hmm. working to help support their family. And as you mentioned, health is not at the top of the list. I like exactly. to say we are not selfish. We like to put others first. Mm -hmm. And therefore, how do you go about showing them uh, these different types of resources offered to them if they don't have health insurance? With our strategy of really engaging the leadership, um, we're hoping that a lot of this information is being disseminated through a lot of the community service organizations, um, health systems that are local. Um, in addition, an individual can be very proactive. Go on our website call our 800 number. Our website is www.cancer.org and they have a link in Spanish there as well. So everything that's available in English is available in Spanish. There's an icon where you can simply insert your city and state um, or your zip code and it will provide you with a list of events and community organizations and different services within your area. Calling the 800 number will also give you a bilingual representative. Um, our 800 number is 1-800-227-2345. And simply they'll ask, obviously, your name. They'll ask what area you're calling from, your zip code. And they'll pull up a listing of all of the resources that are available in your area, those that are available in Spanish, those that are available at um, little to no cost. Whatever you're looking for, even if it's something um, a question that you have for a family member who is suffering from cancer, what sort of support groups are available for caregivers, not only patients. Um, so there's a variety of resources and they're not just limited to what's sponsored by the American Cancer Society. It's whatever is available to you in your area. Um, we can pull up those resources and we're happy to provide those to you. What process do uh, you and your company go about when uh, a cancer victim does come in here with their family? What 
what do, what do we look forward to? What is the process that you take? Well, this is our local office and we're located in Corporate Commons in Newcastle. Um, when a patient comes in or a caregiver comes in with their family, uh, they're greeted at the front desk where you know we ask them what are their needs, what are they looking for. If, there's, if it's someone that speaks Spanish, um, typically they'll see me. And this is actually the room that, that we're interviewing in. This is where they'll, they'll come. Um, it's a private room. Uh, they will able, be able to sit at this desk, fill out some paperwork. Their family members can sit at the sofa. We have the telephone um, available here. And we'll just talk to them as far as what they're looking for, what their needs are, what their concerns are. Um, in the back of, of uh, the room, we have a couple of wigs. Um, we have hats. We have uh, scarves, different things that we provide in our office. But again, it's a resource. It's a comfort zone. Um, you know, we're letting you know that we're here for you. So we may not have everything you need at that very moment, but we have the telephone nearby, we have the booklets nearby, and we can easily navigate you through that process here in our office. Um, so that's definitely you know something that can be expected when they come to our office. Um, one other resource that we offer is a pa patient navigator. And that person, their responsibility is specifically to navigate that newly diagnosed individual through that cancer process from diagnosis through treatment options um, support groups any component you know any sort of financial concerns that they may have that patient navigator pretty much holds that individual's hand through the process and points them in any direction that they need to go in um, lets them know this is what you need to do and let's get going and let's do it Esta gala es el evento más grande que el Santo Latino hace cada año. ¿Qué tipo de reconocimiento hacen en este evento? En este evento reconocimos al, a la organización que ayuda mucho al Centro Latino, con dinero, con voluntarios, uh, recogiendo ropa para las familias durante, durante la Navidad, juguetes para los niños. So, reconocimos, reconocimos a, un, a un banco, a una entidad o a alguien que nos ha ayudado durante el año uh, bastante. Y también reconocimos al el, el hispano sobresaliente del año. Y también a un hispano que ha demostrado que, que ha, se ha supervisa, superado en su profesión. En profesión. Um, y también reconocimos a personas que nos ayudan durante el año. ¿Quiénes son los participantes en este evento para que este programa tenga éxito en la comunidad hispana? Bueno, hoy tenemos 300, casi 400, casi 400 uh, participantes. Son personas de diferente, diferentes partes de la comunidad, de la comunidad latina, de la comunidad afroamericana, de la comunidad americana, blancos. So, tenemos un apoyo de, de toda la comunidad. Es, es un apoyo tremendo que todo el mundo nos apoya, no solamente la comunidad latina, pero toda la comunidad. Ha sido un placer para apoyar y servir a mi comunidad a través de mi programa de televisión bilingüe que pone de manifiesto mis talentos y conocimientos. Con mis esfuerzos y propuestas, este fue el primer año de la estación que salió a aire un programa en español. Esperemos ver más programas de Latinos en Acción con Yesenia Taveras en el próximo año. Hasta la próxima. Tengan una feliz Navidad y un feliz Año Nuevo. Y recuerden, si ustedes tienen ideas, eventos y tópicos, llamarme a 302-576-2119. Yo soy Yesenia Taveras. Gracias por ver mi programa y que pasen un buen día. <música>